Hey there. So today's video, I'm going to discuss 10 things that I do in my successful resale business. And the catalyst for this video is that I joined these different Poshmark seller groups on Facebook Marketplace. And clearly people new to Poshmark would ask questions um, like, how do you ship shoes? And then people would offer comments. And then the Karens came out with the claws. Oh my God, these bitches were ferocious. They went after people, they went after me. No, that's wrong. I would never do that. I would not do this. And I really feel like the point of those groups is you listen to all the other resellers and what they do. And then you take those ideas that they use and figure out how you can implement them best in your business. My suggestion might not work for the person that does it. Someone else's won't, but seriously, these women were yucking everybody's yum and so annoying. And then I thought, well, there's lots of stuff. I mean, a couple things I said were not popular. And I thought, okay, well, I'm gonna make my own video about what I do in my successful resale business. I have a 15,000 piece closet. Um, my accountant would say my business is very successful. Um, I made six figures in my business. So I'm going to tell you these things. I made a list of 10. Um, take what you want, throw away what you don't, but don't leave crappy comments in the comments if it's something you don't want to do. Um, you might have more questions or you can add some things to it. But again, just be a little nice. I made a list. I've got to put my glasses on so I can read them. But the first one has to do with the descriptions on your items. I, in my descriptions, point out the measurements. That's usually it. My photos will have the fiber tag in it, so I don't need to include that. I don't need to tell you that the jacket zips up if it's already in my title. I don't need to tell you that it has an extra stripe if you can see it in the picture. I'm assuming that my buyers are smart enough to look at those photos and see what they are. Now, if there's a flaw, I will write the description in this, like the title, and in the title, in parentheses, I will write flawed. I want the buyer to know right away before they go further that there's a flaw. And then if I have to in the description, I will write what that flaw is and I will have a photograph. And that is the only time I really deviate from my measurements only in my descriptions. That's it, bottom line. The next one is additional measurements. Always get people that ask for different additional measurements. You know, I for Jean's example, I put waist across, I put the rise, and I put the NC measurement. I'll get people that will say, can you measure four inches down and across from the waist? Can you measure across the thigh? Can you give me a foot opening? No, I can't. Nope, I can't. I went back years, the last, because I had made this a policy of mine in 2023 that I was not gonna do this anymore. In 2022, I had 103 people ask me for additional measurements, something unique. And this is, I went through, I literally went through and counted them all to see how many questions I had with additional measurement questions. 103 questions, one person. One person made a purchase from that extra work of me running up and down the stairs and supplying these measurements. And the purchase was $21. It is absolutely not worth my time at night when I'm home after I get home from my other job, um, I have a part-time job, I'm a full-time reseller with a part-time job. Um, it's not worth my time to do that. It's just not, and I, I don't wanna do it. Another thing, number three, I don't wash all the items I thrift. Even from the bins, I don't wash all the items I thrift. I, I thrift. If something stinks, I just flat out don't bring it home. I don't care if it's a good item or not, I'm not bringing it home. But you know, something you might notice a little bit later, I spray a little bit with them, some Febreze that for fabric and leave that hanging up if I have to. If there's no stains on it, nothing visible, I am not washing it. I'm assuming my buyer's gonna take care of that much like I wash everything that I get that I buy before I put it on my body. That's just what I do. Not gonna wash it. I will do stain removal. I don't like to buy things with stains, but I do a big stack of things in my in my uh, laundry room, and then I run a basin full of the OxyClean and Dawn and all that. I spot treat, and I do them all at once when I feel like doing that, but that's my death pile. It's the cleaning pile. I don't really have a death pile of stuff I haven't listed yet. That's that's what that is. So there are the times that I will wash an item, but everything else does not go in my washing machine. Another thing I don't do, I don't usually steam things. If it has a little tiny wrinkle here or there, I leave it, I'm not gonna steam it. I just try to get this light out of my eye. I don't, I don't steam it. I 
hanging up on the hanger. I pull it a little bit, make sure there's no wrinkles in it or bad wrinkles in it, and I'll take a picture of it. I'll make these pictures very clear and very nice, but not all items need to be steamed, so I do not steam all items. I do have a beautiful Jiffy steamer, and I do use it. I do steam items that just high-end items in particular. Like if I get myself like a, a M.M. LaFleur dress with a wrinkle on it, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna steam that. That's a high-end item, it needs to be steamed. My lower-end items, I'm not worrying about it. I'm not gonna get much for them anyway, and people aren't really giving a crap that there's a wrinkle in it because they're going to get it with wrinkles in it in the first place. The next thing I don't do along those lines is when you store items, I see lots of resellers fold all their items really neatly and put them in these clear plastic bags and then put them in their bin storage system. Um, I don't do that. I have bins that are labeled A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then in my spreadsheet, I have them listed where I can find them. If something's done, I'm on bin M, just goes in bin M with everything else. It does get you know mixed up in there, but I just don't do it. I don't wanna spend the money for it. I don't wanna spend the time for it. I don't wanna take them out and then ship them. It's just an extra step that I don't take and I don't want to take it, so I don't. Ugh, okay. Another thing with shipping, a lot of people like the fun little packages. I wanna make it fun for my buyer and, and you know, I buy from retailers on Amazon and no one's making it extra fun for me. I don't add stickers. I don't add thank you notes. I don't add little samples that I got from, you know, beauty bin boxes or whatever. I don't do anything like that. I don't add anything extra. My, just my item goes in the bag and that's it. I don't use paper or anything on the items unless it's a high-end item. Then I will wrap it really nice and put the tape on it. But it just goes straight from my bin, straight into my poly mailer. This is one of the things, my number seven option, that I got nailed on when I said this, but people talking about shoes and mailing shoes. All I do with shoes is I take packing paper, I wrap each shoe individually so they don't bang around with each other, and I put them in a USPS free poly mailer. That's it, absolutely it. I will do it for heels too that fit in there. There are occasionally larger items that I have larger Pally, Pally Millers that I buy myself, boots, boots, but if I can put the boots in there, most of the time the cap of the boot folds down, I wrap it really well with paper and I put it in my larger personal Pally Millers, not the USPS ones. Um, occasionally higher end boot, like some brand new, oh, I don't know, bring a, bring a cowboy boot, some Lacazy cowboy boots, I'll put them in a box. I want that better for presentation because they're paying a lot more money and I want it to arrive that way. Now people are assuming, oh, there's all this risk. They're going to get broken. They're going to get scuffed up. It doesn't happen. I've been reselling for over five years on Poshmark, longer on eBay, but I have been doing this for years, years. I tell you, every single pair of shoes that I have that goes this way, I have not gotten one complaint. The shoes have gotten there. I've gotten love notes. They're beautiful. They're perfect. No one has complained about the packaging, not a single time. So I'm not going to be working harder. I'm going to be working smarter. Oh, say, low ball offers. That's number eight. You'll hear people, oh, I wouldn't have made all these sales if I didn't respond to a low ball offer. I wouldn't have done that if I hadn't. I don't believe that. If someone, I, I have a certain percentage in my closet that I'm willing to give discounts for. But if a person gives me an offer of $15 on a $100 item, I just click decline. I don't play that game. It's like an invitation to a game and I do not enjoy that. So I do not participate. If they want to make a better offer, I feel my decline says to them, you're not in the ballpark and I'm not going to do this. I think it sends that message. So they still have the option of making a better offer to you. If they come to the table with a 50% offer, I will go back and forth with them. But if it's a lower than that lowball offer, I don't have the time and I feel like I just said, I'm telling you, mm -mm, not in it, not even close. Then I'll spend a little bit of extra time with you going back and forth if you come at 50% or higher. And some of the times those people will meet you part way. Number nine, photographing. People will take pictures of stuff and they'll consciously make an effort, put them in their drafts and spend all this time removing their backgrounds. No, whatever's in my background is staying. My pictures are good. They're clear. They show the colors well. They're taken in a well-lit area. They're hung on a hanger every time that's a consistent color, like it's a wooden hanger. That's what I like to use for the most part now. And my photos are good. 
I do not need to remove that background for you to see my item and I'm not gonna do it. I try to take them on the back of a white door. I have a section in my hallway if the light's not that great on a day, I'll move because all the lights come in this window. And the background happens to be my stairwell coming down and, and some pretty plants you see in it and it's gray. I don't remove the backgrounds for that, you know. You, pff, no one gives a shit, that's what I'm saying. It's just not a thing. I'm just not gonna do it. The last thing is, I don't sell items under $15, nothing. Poshmark's thing is if you sell something for $15 in reduction, you can participate in closet clear out. So I don't pick up items that I'm not gonna be able to reduce to $15 or, or <clears throat> excuse me, I just said that wrong. I'm not gonna pick up items that are not gonna sell for more than $15. I make a plan not to do that, but I can reduce down to 15. However, on Poshmark, if you sell an item for under $15, say you sell, and you know, that's, that's your 20% that Poshmark tells you they take. But if you sell an item for $10, under 15, they're taking 295 out of that. So if you sell an item for 10 bucks, now Poshmark is taking 30% of your money, not 20. So there's a reason I don't do this. The only, the only time that I deviate from this is if I do a bundle sale, because I can make that cost up in there. If there's something that I can go lower that I picked up for the bins, someone threw it in a bundle, the way I calculate it in my mind, I'm saying, okay, well, this is technically going to be under 15 bucks, but this person is paying a little bit more for the shirt, the other shirt that's going with it. So 50, under 15 bucks, I'm absolutely not interested. So again, this is my list of 10 things. I, I have more, so maybe there'll be a part two of this, or maybe people will have some more questions. Um, but at the end of the day, like I said at the beginning, pick the things I just said that might work for you. If you have fun putting those stickers and things on your bags, you should certainly do it. If you love the idea that your buyer's getting a, a great presentation, then do it. I typically sell way too many items to be concerned with a lot of these things. I am a higher volume seller because a seller because I do have that many items in my closet, but many of these things I still wasn't doing when I had a smaller closet and was building it. So take what you want, leave the rest. I hope you have a very thrifty day and I hope you'll want like and subscribe this video. Go back and check out my other fun videos. And yeah, I hope to see you back here soon. Have a great day, my thrifty friends.